So let's go through the collection. It is tried to be some sort of geographical logic, um, but space logic sometimes trump that and uh, doesn't quite fit. Um, starts European languages over here, um, goes Here's Asia and Africa, I mean, uh, uh, Africa and the, the Americas, and then into, into Asia, basically. So, uh, if we start over in this section here, um, the language up at the top is English. And I do not have any material for, um, like, ESL, uh, to teaching English as a foreign language, but I do have some... Uh, dictionaries and uh, style guides, Harcourt Gray style guides, reference thesauruses, things like that. Here's some copies of uh, the, the Connell Darling books, selected synonyms of principal Indo-European languages, my own four volume English, French, Spanish, German dictionary. Uh, I have some books in English that are specifically related to language learning. So I've got some uh, books on historical linguistics and some books like about how to learn languages, guides, you know, how to, how to learn any language and things like this. So books about language study. So English, I've got Old English and Middle English down here, but uh, Modern English, um, this is to me a foreign language research reference center. I don't have material for, for learning English, but uh, for using English in here. So that's the top shelf. Uh, and then this, this rest of this is Romance. So starting up on this next shelf, I've got material for Latin, and Latin continues into here. So Latin, I've got a very extensive collection of different kinds of textbooks, intermediate, advanced textbooks, readers, dictionaries, grammars, reference books, and all sorts of things for the study of Latin. Uh, and then after Latin, uh, tried to, I was happy to actually have some space and be able to keep things a bit separated. I've got a couple of books about um, sort of romance linguistics, from Latin to romance and sound charts and things like that. Uh, a couple of books about romance linguistics and then heading into um, some older languages, old French, maybe should be with French down here. Um, again, most of my books for reading old French, bilingual, modern French and, and, and medieval French are upstairs. This is just a, a, a grammar and, and dictionary. Um, so old French, and then I have old Occitan. Uh, and then I have some uh, modern Occitan books. And as I mentioned a little while ago, among the books that have mysteriously disappeared are an entire collection that I know I had, and I don't remember the life of me lending to somebody. It's the same publishing house, the Omnivox. And I still have the recordings for, but the texts have disappeared for um, dialects. So when I say 155 different languages here, it's languages that, to me, some of the things that are here are one language, but if they have a different textbook, a different name, I'm sort of including that. Other things could be broken into more languages. So um, this is for Occitan. There's a special volume for Languedocien, Gascon, and Limousin that have uh, somebody took Can you them. show it to the camera, the thing you're reading? Oh yeah, the things that have disappeared. The things we're putting out a call to the world to, to return if they know where they are. Here, all of these books. Um, these these three. These three have gone a wall. I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Occitan is uh, again, here's old Occitan, and this Assimil, modern Occitan, is one of my favorite Assimils because it goes into the language of the troubadours and everything here. It also has those different dialects in the exercise. This is a really, really nice, fun book to work through, you know, full of culture and intellectual stimulation. Yeah, it just gives a lot of, of the troubadour language in here. So Occitan, I'm not sure. I've seen really different statistics for like supposedly there's still millions of people that speak it in the south of France. And I just, when I traveled around there trying to look for it, I could never find it. And I went to a couple of associations that like meetings of Occitan, and it was basically all in French in the middle of the Occitan territory. So I kind of think it's a, you know, that's why it's, you know, old, old Occitan, modern Occitan. But I think there was a guy who won the Nobel prize for something in Occitan at the beginning of the 20th century. So there must be some people that still use it, so. That's kind of a neat language to know. Um, and then I also have some material for uh, Reto Romanche, which is the, um, the 
fourth official language of Switzerland. Um, and this is a language that I've got some notes in here that I had a wonderful time um, making a very intensive field research. Um, I went to a little town in this region and I just showed up and you know I didn't really have it any plan or anything and I just showed up and I said to the people in the town you know I'm interested in this language do you actually speak it here and they were so happy to have me there and particularly the the town pastor who was also the school teacher he gave me free lessons for like the two or three days that I was there and it was just you know um, it was just a really good experience so languages like this people are really happy to help you have them learn them um, Mm -hmm. Then I have uh, some other, just to, because there's no other good place to put them, some other, well, they're Asimil things. Here's Creole and Corsican. I have a book for Sicilian somewhere else that should be right here when I get it back. So these are some individual Romance languages that I've got one thing for. Then I go down here, and this shelf turns into Italian. Uh, and then I've got a number of dictionaries that are two Italian and other languages, and also some here, and then Romanian. So up to this stage, okay, so Occitan is not, I mean, those are small languages, but Latin in particular, I've really got enough to, to learn it thoroughly from. I think Italian too, Romanian maybe also as well. Portuguese down here uh, is, again, this is one, they call the some of the books for Brazilian Portuguese, Brazilian, whereas they call continental Portuguese, Portuguese. So you could count this as two languages if you, you wanted to in terms of different textbooks, but we, we didn't for that counting purpose. Ah, the spine is breaking off. Um, then over here is Catalan, and Catalan is Languages, again, not like, you know, we're, we're retro mantra people are overjoyed to have you show up. Catalan also has a, a kind of like strong presence in Barcelona. If you go there, you meet the right people. They're happy to speak it with you. So I've got some really good Catalan grammars that are like reading grammars. Um, and this really kind of interesting course, Diggy Diggy, that uh, some... Um, TV shows, you can watch for that too if you like that. But the best thing for Catalan is this. This is one of the best Asimil books ever, the old Catalan. Um, really rich and intelligent and this update replacement is really a sorry, just sort of phrase book type thing. So if you can interested in Catalan, try to get the old one rather than the contemporary one. Shall I shame the people that teach yourself? Here is, teach yourself, Catalan, the original receipt that I bought this book at the University of Chicago bookstore, seminary co-op bookstore, in on, uh, May 27th, 1988, brand new. Look at this brand new book. Paper, rotten, yellow, all this, but smells wonderful. Wow, it really smells good. Smell it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then down here is Spanish, uh, and down here is French. So that's what I have for Romance. You want to ask any questions before we move on to Germanic? I have a general question, which is like, I notice sometimes you have books, like in French, on Brazilian and things like that. So mm -hmm. how, how do you actually... So how do you use these books? Like, do you use it to practice both your French and to learn a new language? Or? Oh, so like this here? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, in inadvertently, I've always told people that I think that mm -hmm. this company in general makes the best right. manuals for learning languages, and it's a French company, so mm -hmm. I don't know if they make these in English. Uh, if they do, they're, they're mm -hmm. translated. They don't have a, a, a big, broad market in English, um, right. so... Um, French is just a good language to to know so that you can have access to to this series if nothing else I've certainly got others um, but um, that is it's it's more so that I can have access to the, to the series but um, that is a side benefit is that yes if you're using um, using 
this, you know, you're obviously practicing French at the same time you're practicing Portuguese, you're learning Portuguese, but more than, oh, you know, it's this time-saving device, so I'm, I'm practicing both. Um, it is, for a language like this, I mean, Portuguese and French are much more similar than they are, than, than Portuguese and English are, and so you're going to see correspondences and relationships to it. So if you're capable of you no know, reading, studying Portuguese from French or from, from, from Spanish, here, this is a, using a Spanish guide. Um, yeah, if you're capable of studying French from Spanish, or, or, or I'm capable of studying a language like Portuguese from a language like Spanish or French, you're much better off doing so because you see the correspondences and the relationships. Learning a language is like weaving a net, you know, and you get, you know, the more hooks you have to hang things on, the more things you can see. So it just makes a lot of sense to, to do that, um, as well as being available from that. So do you have a preference or do you just, when you study a language, you just find whichever is the best materials and you just do that? Or are you like, oh, I'm studying a romance language, so I'll get a manual in a, another romance language? Or do you just choose the best materials that are out there? Oh, um, I kind of, yeah, I mean, yeah, I was look for the best materials that's out there uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, but that, that, that could play into it. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. if, it, if it's a, you know, I think it's more likely for languages like this, it's likely to be in French because the best material is likely to be assimil. Um, and mm -hmm. by that same criterion, looking for something that, you know, is, is explained, I mean, here is Catalan and it's in Spanish and, you know, they're very, very close languages. And so again, it just makes the most, that, that, apart, that the content of this book, it goes into the literature and goes into this, what makes it really excellent. But the fact that it is um, explained by such a close sister language, that also makes it one of the better things because of that, mm -hmm. that, that correspondence relationship.